Hi everybody, Bobby Sanabria back here for part two of Percussion Discussion, our weekly little video series for you who are great fans of the Bronx Music Heritage Center, the place to be, the BMHC. As you well know, I'm the core artistic director with my partner in time, the great Elena Martinez. And if you remember from the first part of our percussion discussion, uh, Beats from the Bronx, well, I told you a little bit about La Clave del Son, the Clave of Son. Just to review real quick, the Clave of Son, well, what is Son? The folk song tradition of Eastern Cuba, the foundation of what we call salsa. And what is salsa? It's simply Cuban music, the way we play here in New York City with a freaking New Yorkian attitude, all right? So, the Clave of Son is five attacks. Five attacks. It could be split up three plus two like this. One, two, one, two, three, four, and two. Three plus two. Three plus two. An example of a melody in three, two clave is Bamo rumbero que la rumba ya va empezar. Bamo timbero. That's a famous song by Tito Puente, Para Los Rumberos. But the clave could start on the part with just the two beats, or what we would call two, three. For example, like this. One, two, one, two, three, four, one. Saca tu mujer bandolero, saca la baila. Saca tu mujer bandolero, saca la baila. Okay, that was another famous song by Maestro Tito Puente. Saca tu mujer, take your lady out to dance. Now, it's important that you know that because the rhythm of the melody tells you the direction of the clave. The rhythm of the melody tells you the direction of the clave. The rhythm of the melody tells you the direction of the clave, whether it's 2-3 three, or 3-2. Three, so you don't really add the clave to the music. The clave is being told to you already. It's in there through the rhythm of the melody. For example, if I sang to you this simple little melody, one, two, one, two, three, four, ahora vengo yo, ahora vengo yo, Ahora vengo yo. Ahora vengo yo. What do you think? Is the direction 2 3 or 3 2? <clears throat> well, let's try uh, 2 3 first to see how that sounds. 1, 2, 3, 4. Ahora vengo yo. Ahora vengo yo. That sounds all right, but let's try it in 3 2. 1. Two, one, two, three, four. Ahora vengo yo. Ahora vengo yo. Ahora vengo yo. Ahora vengo yo. You see how the clave in three two fits perfectly with the rhythm of the melody. So now we're in clave. The first way in two three, like I did, would be out of clave, or what we would call crossed or cruzado or cruzado, as we would say in the musical parlance of salsa musicians. If the clave is crossed, that's a major no-no because you're causing unnecessary tension within the structure of the melody. And if that's crossed, then everything else in the foundation is gonna have cracks in it and the building will topple down rhythmically. But if it's in clave, the music is energized when the other rhythms link up with that direction of the clave correctly, then the music is energized to its maximum potential and you're in the groove. And who are the beneficiaries of that? Well, not only the musicians having a good time, but you, the dancers out there listening, or you who are sitting down watching and just grooving on what the orchestra is doing. <clears throat> All right. So that's a little 
example of playing in clave, in clave, and why the clave is so important. Now, in relation to uh, one of the basic instruments that we use as a foundation instrument in salsa are the conga drums, okay? And the congas, along with the piano and the bass, and if there's a guitar player or a Cuban tres, the mandolin instrument of Cuba, or the Puerto Rican cuatro, the mandolin instrument of Puerto Rico, they all play tumbaos. What does the word tumbao mean? It means a repetitive rhythm. It keeps repeating over and over again, okay? That kind of like hypnotizes you, right? And gets you into the groove. So somebody might say to a piano player, a band leader might say, oh yeah, cambia el tumbao que estás tocando. Hey, play the tumbao, the rhythm on the piano that you're playing or to the bass player, okay? So the conga, especially in salsa, the, the tumbao's played by the congas, the piano, and the bass are very, very important because they're the foundation. And those uh, instruments have to be obviously in clave with the song. So, for example, listen to this groove that I'm playing on the conga drums. I'll count it in. It's a, a melody into, unto itself. One, two, one, two, three, four. the clave of that rhythm that rhythm sounds nice it's grooving etc etc but what's the clave is it three two or two three listen to the melody of the congas again one two one two three four one said two three you were correct how does that sound well I'm gonna tap out the clave with my left foot okay and you're gonna hear how it sounds with this tumbao of the congas one two one two three four of the congas is telling you what the clave is all right when you hear that second drum that's the three side of the clave okay so let's try it now reversed three two you try clapping along all right i'm not going to play the clave but from the first lesson you should know what the clave of three two is the clave of song i'm going to count you in one two one two three four Okay, so you hear how the melody fits with the three side of the clave, the part that's syncopated. What do we mean by syncopation? What we mean is that there are beats or rhythms in between the counts, okay? Here's a simple example. If I count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and I'm going to play all the beats in between. <laughs> one. a simple example of syncopation <clears throat> so in the clave of song the two side of the clave has no syncopation because it falls right on the beat not in between the beat one two three four one two 
three, four, one, two, three, four. But the three side of the clave has one syncopation, the one note in the middle. Here's the three side of the clave. One, two, three, four, one, two, the middle note. One, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four. Okay? So that has that one note between two and three. One, two, and three, four. Okay, got it again? One, two. Two and three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two and three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two and three, four. One, two, three, four. Good. So <clears throat> the three side is syncopated. The two side is not syncopated. Okay. Now there's one important note in the clave of song. And that is the last note of the three side of the clave. This note. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four. We call that note <coughs> the ponche or el ponche in Spanish. Ponche means punch, the punch, again, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, even if you're playing just one conga drum and you would play a basic tumbao on it, like this, one, two, three, four, one, If you heard that, you wouldn't know where the clave is because it's what we call clave neutral or neutral. Because the bar, the count, the tumbao, all right, just keeps repeating over and over again with no differences. But a good conguero or conguera would let you know where the clave is even if they were playing tumbao on one drum. And how do they do that? By bringing out that one note, the ponche, in the tumbao. Here, let me give you an example. So the clave right here is going to be two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Okay? Now, if we play neutral... came in on the three side, I came in there starting on the two side of the clave, it would sound like this, one, two, three, four. See how the conga player can align with the clave with their tumbaos uh, played on the one drum? So next time you hear a salsa recording, during the melody of the song, usually the conga player just plays one drum. And then when they get to what we call the montuno, M-O-N-T-U-N-O, -N -N which is the part that repeats over and over again, and the piano gets busy, the bass gets busy, the congas get busy, and you hear call and response. You hear a coro, a background vocals by someone, 
uh, a chorus, usually of two singers, and then the sonero, if it's a male, or sonera, they improvise over that montuno, that vamp. The word montuno comes from the word montura, which means the saddle, the saddle of a horse. You're riding on a saddle of chords, okay, in a salsa tune, and that's where the musicians get to improvise, but mostly the singer gets to improvise, okay? So, for example, I'm going to sing an old Cuban tune called Bilongo, which means in Bantu Congolese, the people from Western Central Africa, from the, from the country of Zaire, <coughs> also known as the Congo. Bilongo means a magic spell, a magic spell, okay? And the song is very old. It was written by great Cuban Guillermo Rodriguez de Fife way, way back. I believe in the 1930s even. It goes back that far. And it's about a man who falls in love with a woman. And uh, he loves the way she cooks, the way she makes coffee. And uh, her name is Tomasa. And she's not really that good looking. But he falls in love with her because she's thrown a bilongo, a magic spell, on her. Now listen to how I play on the conga, and listen to how the clave weaves from one side in certain parts of the song to the other without breaking. This is what we call clave counterpoint, and it means that the clave will, will be seamless throughout the different parts of the song. Some of the parts of the song are on the three side of the clave, some of the parts of the song are on the two side of the club. All right, we're going to start in two, three, because that's the way the song starts. So everybody clap with me. One, two, one, two, three, four.
All right. So if you stay tapping clave with me through all of that, you have some clave consciousness, okay? And if you weren't able to, go back and follow my left foot, okay? You notice how we weaved from one side of the clave to the other and everything was seamless? That meant we were in clave. So for the Bronx Music Heritage Center, my name is Bobby Sanabria. We hope your lives are always in clave. Vamos rumbero que la rumba ya va a pesar. Vamos rumbero que la rumba ya va a pesar.